I want you to turn to the book of John, John chapter 1. Uh, really, these first five verses kind of uh, preach itself. And Brother Cal, as you, you're a speaker, you know how it is. And Brother Paul, you love to have Scripture that speaks for itself. Very easy to understand. And uh, we're going to dive into uh, this passage tonight. And I want to talk to you on this subject, Just Give Me Jesus. How many of you uh, have already been asked, what, what do you want for Christmas? Anybody? You have? There have been a couple others. I've been asked, what do you want for Christmas this year? I really don't need anything. But I got to thinking about that, and, and uh, really all that we really, really need in life is just Jesus. Especially in a time in which we're living today, in a world that is uh, full of chaos, and I tell you what, I tell you what, everybody over in the Israel land and all that over there, you know, all they need, they really just need Jesus. And one day Jesus is going to come and he's going to make everything right and he's going to straighten everything out. So uh, with that in mind, just give me Jesus. I want to ask you the question, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? He lived here over 2,000 years ago. He lived in an obscure, obscure town. He lived in an obscure country. And he lived during a very dark period in human history. And not only that, the world was dominated by the Roman Empire. Yet Jesus stands unequaled. Amen? Jesus stands unparall unparalleled, and in his greatness... I tell you, folks, when you start thinking about how great Jesus is, it just makes you swell up on the inside, does it not? In the phenomenal greatness of his life, as well as in the stunning impact he has that he's had on history, melts my heart. So who is Jesus? What is there about him that makes him so compelling? That architects, they build buildings to worship him. Art galleries have many art works that are very beautiful that were created to honor him. Some of the world's most glorious and wonderful songs were written to praise and worship Jesus. 2,000 years after he had visibly gone back to heaven in his ascension, people from all walks of life, including you and me, we say that he has saved us, he has saved our soul, we, we testify to that, that we give our life, we gave our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. There are others who say that he has saved them from drugs, or he has saved them from illness, or he has saved them from suicide, he has saved them from depression or from hopelessness. So who is Jesus? In his name, in the name of Jesus, people forsake personal gain to feed the hungry. They forsake personal gain to house the homeless, to clothe the naked, and to heal the sick. So folks, this man Jesus has made an impact in so many lives. But I want to give you just two things tonight two points tonight about who is Jesus. Number one, Jesus is bigger than I think. Jesus is bigger than I think. The Bible says in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. How awesome that word is, the word word, and you'll notice that it's capitalized, it's capital W, which means deity, and how awesome that the word that was in the beginning by which and through which God created everything was and is a living person with a mind, with a will, with emotions, and with intellect. So Jesus is bigger than I think. Number one, Jesus is eternal. Jesus is eternal. Now, John here states something very important. He states that the living person here was not from the beginning. 
John states that he was in the beginning. Folks, that's a whole lot of difference. He wasn't from the beginning. He was in the beginning. But that in the beginning of time, space, the universe, and history, folks, he was already there. He was eternal, and he remains eternal. Now, if you've ever taught Sunday school or if you've ever preached from this passage, you always you realize that that word, uh, the word word is the word logos in, in the Greek. And it means the outward expression of the mind and will that rules the universe. So think about Jesus being the ruler and the master of the universe. Jesus being the ruler and the master of all creation. Isn't it great to know that? Matter of fact, the Bible says he was part of our creation. Uh, Bible says in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image. So we find that Jesus was there. And John began his gospel here by stating in the Greek that the Logos had come from God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And really, if you get really deep down into this, and I'm trying to go back to some of the Sunday school lessons I taught as as the Lord's bringing these up to my mind, I'm thinking that it's expressing not just that he's the Logos, but he is the living Logos. And he is still alive today. That is an outward revelation of the heart and mind of God expressed perfectly for us in a living person. Folks, let me remind you that Jesus came down from heaven to put on humanity, to live here for 33 years, die, taking all of our sin upon himself so that we can have his heaven. I'm telling you, that's a pretty good thing, isn't it? So who is Jesus? Well, John spoke about him. He said, Jesus is the living living expression of what is on God's mind. But he's more than that. Jesus is the living expression of what's on God's heart. But still, he's more than that. Jesus is the very heart of the Almighty God of the universe laid bare for all to see. Let me remind you of this passage. If you want to turn to it, if you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. It said, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. And he has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. There again, he was there when all creation was made. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he laid by him, when he had by himself purged our sin. <laughs> Folks, it was by himself. We'll get to this verse in a moment, John 14, 6. He's the only way that there is to heaven. Amen? Who had, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he had, as by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. You see, these scriptures are pointing to the fact that Jesus is eternal. Do you want to know what's on the mind of God? Then look at Jesus. John 14. Turn there if you would. John 14. Beginning in verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then verse 7 is very interesting. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And then Jesus said to him, and I could see him looking looking Philip straight in the eye, "Have have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So what was on the mind of God? Look at Jesus. 
Well, what, what, do you do, what do you know about the will of God? Or do you, do you want to know the will of God? Then look at Jesus. John 10.10 10 says that Jesus has come to give us life and to ha- so that we can have it more what? Just a little at a time? Is that what he's saying? No, more abundantly. He wants us to have a joyful, abundant Christian walk, a Christian life, a Christian journey uh, throughout our life. And do you want to know what is in the heart of God? All you got to do is look to Jesus. And in Matthew 14, 14, the Bible says that the, the heart of Jesus was just moved with compassion. Because this multitude had come and they were hungry. Do you remember what Jesus did? First of all, he asked his disciples if there was any, what, what to do. But he sat those people down. He sat all of those down, perhaps even 15,000 people, counting the men and the, the wives and the children. And he took those loaves, he took those fish, and he provided. Why would he do that? Because he was moved with compassion. Folks, that's the heart of God. God is moved with compassion for you. What, is, what am I trying to say? Well, I'm trying to say that Jesus makes God visible. And Jesus is eternal. But not only is Jesus eternal, Jesus is equal. Turn back to John 1. Jesus is equal. The Bible says he was with God in the beginning. Look at verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. <laughs> you know, you can't really be with yourself. you got to be with somebody else, right? So he was with God in the beginning. Again, Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image. They were supreme beings who were equal in power, in activity, in personality, intelligence. They were and they are equally supreme, sharing the glory and the splendor of heaven's throne. And to me, folks, that's a mystery to a lot of people. How could God be one God yet at the same time be more than one? As folks, we teach and we believe He's the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They were equal. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus laid aside that when he came here to heaven. Folks, we worship an infinite God. We worship a powerful God. And we worship a powerful Christ. His name's Jesus. So he was, he was eternal, he's equal, but he's also enduringly the same. The Bible says he hasn't changed. Aren't you glad Jesus hadn't changed? He hadn't changed his mind, folks. He wants to seek and to save those who are lost. He hasn't changed his mind on that. It says again in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. He hasn't had a personality change. (laughs) Some people think Jesus has changed. He hadn't. Matter of fact, I saw an article just the other day that uh, there's, there's a guy that came and he's all over the internet and he says he's the real Christ. He's the real Jesus. No, he's not. That man hadn't died on a cross. That man hadn't been buried in a tomb. And that man hadn't risen from the dead. Only Jesus can claim that. Amen? Well, the one who spoke the worlds into existence is the same person who has power to transform your life and mine. And he has has manifested that power time after time after time. He's the one who offered all men salvation from the storm of his judgment. If they would just come into the ark... He's the same person today who offers salvation from judgment if we would just come to him at the cross. He's the one who called Abraham out of the Ur of the Chaldees, promising to fully bless him if he would follow him in a life of faith. And Abraham did that. But he's the same person who today calls us out of the world and promises to bless us if we will follow him in obedience. Jesus is the one who delivered his children from bondage in Egypt with a titanic display of power. And he's the same person who was crucified, then rose from the dead to deliver his children today from the bondage of sin. Folks, do you see why I want Jesus? (laughs) And we need Jesus. He's the one who answered Elijah's prayer and sent down the fire to consume the sacrifice on Mount Carmel. But he also sent rain to end the three-year drought in Israel, 
He's the same person today who hears and answers our prayer. Just give me Jesus, folks. And he's bigger than I think. But secondly, not only is he bigger than I think, (laughs) but he's greater than I think. Look at verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In other words, the one who was with God and was God and is the same today as he was in the beginning is the creator. And a couple of things. Number one, Jesus is the source of life. He's the source of life. The greatness of his power to create, to design, to form, to mold, to make, to build, to arrange, defies the limits of our imagination. But look at verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So since he created everything, there's nothing beyond his power to fix or mend or heal or restore. Folks, just give me Jesus. He's the source of life. But not only is he the source of life, he is the sustainer of life. Again, in verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. With his unlimited power, the living logos of God not only created all things, but even today he still sustains all things by his powerful word. Folks, I don't don't know if we realize just how great Jesus really is. And I think we're going to really be amazed once we step into heaven and we see Jesus for the first time. Oh, I want to see my mama. I'm ready to see my mama again. But I'm going to tell you, mama's going to have to wait. Because folks, I want to see Jesus. When I walk through that pearly gate, I just want to say, just give me Jesus. Because I want to thank him. I want to worship him. I want to praise him for all he's done. So I ask this question, who doesn't need God? Who doesn't need Jesus? Everybody needs Jesus, right? Think of it like this. Our planet is 93 million miles from the sun. That's amazing to me, and yet we can see the sun rise and set every day. 93 million miles away. Wow. Well, if the sun was any closer to the earth, we'd burn up. I know they're talking global warming, and we're getting hotter and hotter. God's got it under control, folks. Read the book of Genesis. He says, long as there's day and night, or winter, summer, fall, and night, you know, it's, it's going to happen. It's all in his timetable. If it were farther away, we'd freeze. Now, I thought, I thought this morning it was probably further away, but anyway. Our planet tilts exactly 23 degrees on its axis, giving us four seasons a year. If it tilted at any other angle, we would have a massive continent of ice. Think about it. Jesus sustains this. The moon is the exact distance from the earth to give us two ocean tides a day. If it were any greater or lesser distance, the earth would be flooded. You ever thought of that? Jesus is sustaining all this. He's got all this covered. I didn't know this one, but I found it. It said the ocean floor is at a depth that gives us oxygen, which sustains human life. If the depth were any different, the air we breathe would be poisonous. Only Jesus could do that. The atmosphere is the exact density to keep meteors and space objects from hitting us. By the way, I don't believe in UFOs, do you? If it were any thinner, we would be constantly bombarded by objects from outer space. It's just the way he made it. And it's still the way he made it. So folks, who keeps all this in order? (laughs) Who keeps us from being sucked into a giant black hole or planets uh, from spinning out of control or stars from falling out of the sky? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something, and I I love this. He's the one that keeps us upright on earth while it's turning on its axis. 
That's Jesus, folks. Just give me Jesus. He's the one who gives the very breath that we breathe. So he is the source of life, but he's also the sustainer of life. And then the last, and I close with this, he's the significance of life. Look at verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. He outshines the darkness every single time. That's the significance of who Jesus is. John here is leading us to a fuller understanding of Jesus. He is saying that in him, in Jesus, is life. And that life was the light of men. I want to tell you, Buddha can't do it. Confucius can't do it. Muhammad can't do it. Allah can't do it. Jesus can do it. Because he's the light of men. His life is our light, our purpose, our meaning, our reason. For living. So folks, when you get up every day, you need to just say this. Before you get a cup of coffee or a bowl of Cheerios, whatever it may be, you need to say, just give me Jesus. You got to start with him every day. You got to let him walk with you every day. You got to end the day with Jesus. You've got to realize as you lay your head down to sleep, Jesus is there right there with you. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, is right there. And folks, that's what happens when you've got Jesus. So this Christmas, you're going to be asked, what do you want? Well, somebody asks you, why don't you just say, oh, just give me Jesus. Because that's all we need. Really, that's all I want in life. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. And I know it's just a simple passage. And Lord, thank you just for putting thoughts in my mind. And, and I just pray, Lord, you'll be with our pastor. And I pray, Lord, that uh, the pulse ox will come back up. And Lord, that it will be uh, already better tomorrow. And I just pray, Lord, that also in this heater situation, Lord, that they can find what's going on there. And I pray, Lord, as we now go into our prayer request. I pray, Lord, for uh, for all of those on it, and, and uh, Lord, we'll be praying more about them in just a moment. So God, again, bless us this night. In Jesus' name, amen.